What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be taking a look at the final release version of Beneath the Mountain. I've played about four or five hours of the game. I've gotten all the way to the end of one of the maps. I have collected my thoughts and I am ready to render my first impressions of the title, which we've now been covering for years. If you've never seen Beneath the Mountain before, a lot of people will compare this to Dungeon Keeper. I don't think that that's succinct. I've probably done it in the past too, and when I did it, I don't think that's succinct anymore after spending a lot of time with the game. I think it's actually just a RTS. That's it. This is an RTS in the vein of something like They Are Billions, but with dwarves, where the goal of the game is to build up a base and then have just a ridiculous ass ton of cyclopses and, you know, orcs and goblins attacking your mountain while you're furiously digging downwards, trying to find your way to the heart of the mountain and defeat the great demon king in order to solidify your legacy as a great dwarven king. We'll play for about 30 minutes today. There'll probably be some edits because there's a lot of downtime and whatnot, and I'd like to get a little bit further on in this time around. But if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, it is officially done. You can look down below in the description and get there. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Twitch stream and my Discord. I did stream this game a few days ago. The VOD will still be up. Just in case you wanted to see what four hours of gameplay looked like to get to the point where I am right now with my experience with the game and how I got to the thoughts that I have. Some of those thoughts may no longer be relevant because they pushed like a gig and a half update this morning right after I got everything put together over the last couple days. And so some of the things may not actually come up during this video now. They may have fixed them, but most of them are like bug related. So let's go ahead and start the game on off. We'll put it on normal difficulty. Uh, we've got to pick where we want to start out at. Depending what place you start out with, you get different bonuses. And you have different amounts of attacks and different amounts of trade with your neighbors, depending on your proximity to everybody else. Uh, the map that I maxed out was this one over here, High Thaldir, which is where I was digging deep and I had all the buildings and all the technologies and everything. So maybe we'll go with Kaz Ulbar. We get Devotional Candles. I guess, and we get one free Rune Priest, which is kind of a nice bonus at the beginning of the game, because Rune Priests definitely punch above their weight. They're a useful little unit to have. So welcome to the Mountain Miner. My king, the heart of the mountain lies beneath us. We must reach it before the orcs destroy our home. We've no time to lose. Let's get digging and establish our defenses. War is coming. So here we are. Just like in Dungeon Keeper, you can designate walls to be mined on out. I'm going to go ahead and get my little miners going to get that finished off faster. This is a mining camp. It's what you always start out with. This is your prestige. As your prestige goes up, you will get access to new buildings. You will get better trade deals with your neighbors because they respect you more. Things of that nature. But limited building space is going to be one of the big struggles in the early game. And before the first enemy wave gets here... I find that it's a really, really good idea to have two houses, an army that fills up that entire pop cap, and also a barracks set up. Now, different walls are going to have different amounts of stone, different amounts of gold inside of them. That's pretty much where the Dungeon Keeper comparison is going to kind of fall off. I guess you use traps, too, in order to kill off a whole bunch of the orcs. I don't know where we're going to get attacked from, but down to the next lair is right over there on our right. So that's probably where we'll work towards first. I don't want to overwork my miners because then they don't get anything done. Uh, but with the new miners coming on in, we should be able to speed this along. The goal of the game is not to let your Dwarven King die. If you let the Dwarven King die, the game is officially over. This is your character, your stand-in for all intents and purposes. You don't get to name him, but you do get to customize him as the game goes along, and his appearance and the way he interacts with the world will change based on the upgrades that you give him. As an example, you can get an upgrade that makes him throw away his shield and carry around like a big two-handed warhammer with runes on it, and he takes a lot more damage, but he deals a lot more damage. Uh, you can give him, you know, magical bracers or whatever, and they'll get like a little gem on them that glow. So there are little flavor modifications there that happen to all the units in the game as you go through the tech tree. And the tech tree in this game is actually quite extensive, and it's the opposite of what you expect. So in a lot of other RTSs, you can get all of the researches. In this game, you are limited on the researches you can take, but there are many more researches than you have slots. I'm guessing this was a decision to encourage replayability, and I do think it works for that. I did see technologies in here. They do have synergies with one another. You can build your entire society around like magic 
magic or around like bleeding damage or like stacking dots or like fire or ice or whatever else. And those things do feed into one another and make you stronger. Uh, they will give each other synergies that sort of boost up the efficacy of those abilities. But uh, for right now, there's a lot of technologies for you to dive down on into. In fact, sometimes there's so many of them that they can be a little bit difficult to parse. I think the one that I remember having a lot is down here in the magic menu. You only get to have like six of these, but there's a lot of them. So you're going to spend some time reading, going through all the upgrades, just trying to figure out what is and isn't worth it to you as a dwarvish king and what your prevailing strategy is going to be when you start interacting with the map. Uh, every stone has a hardness rating. That's what the 16 hammers are right there. The harder the stone is, the longer it takes your miners to mine. The white next to it is the amount of stone that you're getting out of that wall. Stone is used for advanced buildings. And then the coin is obviously what gold flakes and things like that exist inside that wall. We are full up on money right now, which means the miners won't work. Uh, that is a behavior that's kind of like baked into the game. I wish it would go away and they would keep mining and you would just discard the money. Uh, but for right now, if you noticed my miners aren't working down here, it's because we don't have room for the gold, unfortunately. It looks like most of our attacks are going to be coming from this leftward direction over here. That should make life easy, though, because we have one choke that everything has to go through, I think. Unless I bust open any further... Nope. That one connects right there. So we've got two paths that converge right here in this larger area. Gotcha. All right, so we'll keep an eye on it. What I just built right there is a vault. That's to avoid future gold issues and keep all my miners mining and my grinders grinding out here in these dwarvish streets. Uh, let's get a few more blocks hollowed on out. You do want to be careful about voids. Uh, voids are dungeon areas that have bad guys inside of them that would love to do terrible things to your dwarves and eat all your miners. And us being the eminently superior fantasy race, uh, everyone in this game is fightable, like, so your miners will fight if they need to, they will go up against enemies, they're not great at it, but every single thing in this game has some base level fighting skill, which is going to help you out along the way. I'd like to get two houses mashed out over here. The game is very dark, don't adjust your monitor. Uh, one thing I think this game could do a lot better is that they need to brighten the whole thing up. The aesthetic is nice, and I get what they were going for. There are lanterns you can place decoratively around that make everything brighter. But I think just about everything in the game needs to have, like, a larger light radius, especially in populated areas, until you've got, like, a sprawling dwarvish metropolis. Unfortunately, it's going to be very, very dark. Who would have ever guessed? It's dark inside of a mine. But dwarves having infravision and whatnot, or at least low light vision, you would expect that you would be viewing the game through the eyes of the king. And so everything would be kind of like illuminated lore wise. I do think the game is a touch too dark. You can brighten it up a little bit. They do give you some options over here to do that. I've played around with it quite a bit, and I can't seem to get it to a spot where I like it, but that's about as close as I can get. I do like that they have a saturation option in there. A lot of games don't include saturation for this reason or that, and I actually kind of dig that right there. These guys are going to be here in seven minutes. That should give us enough time to mine off all these blocks and have room for a barracks. Whether or not it will give us enough time to actually build up and have an army remains to be seen. This little guy that's running around placing torches, he's an engineer. Engineers need some adjustment. They tend to wander way outside your base to build floors and to build torches everywhere they possibly can. They tend to get killed a lot. They meander. Keep an eye on your engineers. It's not altogether uncommon in this game to just be like, where did my batch of eight engineers go? Oh, they wandered off into the area where the enemy's attacking from and they're all dead now. I would like the option to designate RimWorld style of a zone that they see as their living zone. Instead, that they will place torches and they'll build floors inside that area, but never go outside of it. I think that would be a really, really good feature to add to the game in order to make things just feel a little bit nicer. Let's continue whittling away at walls over here after we get done with these two walls down on this side. I think we have enough room right here to possibly... put our barracks in, but time will tell. As the first batch of disgusting greenskins descend down into our lair... Uh, I've got this guy built. Stop doing that. Stop doing what you're doing and go get that block right there. I don't know if there's a way to priority target a tile. I feel like there used to be. I have like this weird memory of clicking on these tiles and this little icon turning blue to force them into priority, but 
I can't seem to find it this time around after playing the game for a little while. We're not going to get too fancy with the amount of dwarves that we cook up right here. We only have dwarf warriors and axe guards available for right now. So we'll get probably about half of each going. I don't know if they're going to get here before the enemy arrives. We should have enough dwarves between the king and whatever comes out by the time the wave gets here. We should be all right. We do have a couple level ups ready to go. With early level ups, what I like to do is I like to make my miners stronger. That's just for me personally. I like miners rhythm because it makes them get a stacking speed buff based on how many miners are working on the same node. And then I also like to take the miners get to keep 5% of the gold they mine. It's not that much gold, trust me. You'll be swimming in gold once you get further on into the game. But they work 10% faster and they move 10% faster as well. Your research rate, it ticks up all on its own. There are some buildings that will boost that up. You can see our little engineers beginning to go out where they should not go right now, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but hopefully they get that designated home area thing in that I suggested. But the orcs are about to be upon us in one day. A little Gabo warband ready to throw down with our glorious army. All right, and we are pop-capped and we are under attack. We made it just in time. We'll want to protect the king and we'll want to protect this like rune priest right here is like a late game unit. And so protecting him is a really good idea. If we can keep him strapped up and like in the pilot seat up until things start getting a little hairy, it'd be really good for us. Now what you're gonna notice in this game, I, I think one of the first complaints everyone is gonna have about this game is gonna be with the pathfinding. For whatever reason, pathfinding never got fixed during the course of the early access. Units will frequently get stuck on things. They will frequently slide around trying to get to the enemy. They don't have the ability to push past one another for example, and so that means your fighting force actually has a very limited efficacy where only the units that are in front in contact with the enemy will be able to do much. And then from there, you kind of need to like micro the guys in the back and have them kind of like sweep around to the sides like that right there in order to get them into base contact. As the game goes along, that micro is going to get more and more and more intense and invasive. I'm sorry to say, that's just the way that it kind of goes. We got some more building space on down in here. And in fact, I think that's the number one thing that needs to be fixed about the game is that the pathfinding is just abysmal. It's really, really bad pathfinding. And there's no shame in saying that. I've seen much larger RTS teams stub their toes on pathfinding woes and concerns. It's not an issue that is exclusive to this game. However, it is an issue that needs to be resolved before the game can be considered a good RTS. Up until then, it can only ever be a fine RTS because pathfinding is the main way that the player interacts with the game world. And like, if that's not working, the amount of micro you have to do with your individual army goes through the roof. And so that'll be my initial observation right there for things that I would fix up about as soon as possible. Your units in this game, they are not possessing of a natural healing skill. Uh, they do not heal on their own. So you are definitely 100% going to need to build a tavern. This is a building that they're all going to go back to, and they're going to eat food, and they're going to feast. And once they eat food and they feast, they get their health back. And then another important thing to note is that you want to set the rally flag for your tavern. Because after they eat, if you don't have that set up, they'll just stay over at the tavern. And then when the enemy arrives, you're going to be like, where is my great and glorious dwarvish army? Uh, they're back at the tavern just sitting around because they didn't go back to the rallying point after they got done over here. We do have another upgrade that we can play around with. Uh, there are a lot of upgrades to play around with in this game. I like Reprisal. I tend to focus on the dwarves that have shields. So this makes it so that whenever they block an enemy attack, their attack speed gets boosted on up, which I think will be nice. Tavern is now officially up and running, and dwarves, ever excited about the prospects of getting alcohol, are going to sprint on over there and get themselves good and sauced up. Because that is the essence of dwarvish society. If we're not getting absolutely ripped before combat, what are we even doing here? Now, this building is going to generate food very, very slowly, but I think we have to buy a perk for that. Actually, no, it looks like by baseline default, it does not produce more food. So that means we need to get a fungus farm up and running. That way they can stock it with food and get the whole thing done. However, the limiting reagent here is going to be our building space. In the early game, you're very, very cramped, and very quickly you're going to be under constant attack from the enemy. And so, just be forewarned that that's the way she goes. These blocks are rapidly disappearing with all of our dwarves working in cohesion, singing mining songs and whatnot. 
they're not actually singing mining songs. But they could be a la something like the Mines of Moria, where they all sing super sick songs while they mine. Like, what could be better than Dwarvish Song? I need a fungus farm. How big is this guy? I mean, if it fits, it ships. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll get the fungus farm up and running, too, so at least we can heal this army once we get down to it. After this attack right here, I'll probably break off a piece of the army to go and clear out that little coven over there, that little coven over there, and that little coven over there. The things you fight down in the dark are not going to be limited to just orcs and goblins. Those are outside threats coming from the surface. There's also zombies. There's trolls. There's slime monsters. There's golems. There's bats. Uh, there's dune-style worms that you gotta fight with. The underground is a very, very dangerous place, and this game will test your mastery of it if you pop the cork on some of these rooms a little bit too early. Uh, the raiding party is now here, so we'll do our best to deal with that. It's a little bit bigger than the last one that we dealt with, but I don't feel like we struggled altogether that much with the last one, so hopefully we'll be okay here. Continue building out space right there. I don't mind. You can see that the fungus farm is now generating food for the tavern, which is really, really good for us. Uh, these guys are on their way in, and we should be about ready to start fighting here. Our king starts out with a whirlwind ability that allows him to AoE, which is quite nice for whittling down enemies uh, that are lighter, like goblins over here. You can also have entire builds around your king that focus entirely uh, upon like his whirlwind ability and it's stacking up bleeds on enemies and then you can build your armies to deal bonus damage versus bleed enemies. I do like those little synergies. It looks like actually the rune priest summoned grandpa over here. The, every rune priest can summon a spectral guard that will come out and fight in their defense, which is pretty cool. They got done with the fight right there. They're now busy doing weird pathfinding stuff, so we'll just reset them real quick. I haven't actually found that like if I change around their formation, I don't know if it like if I loosen their formation. I wanted to see that if I loosen their formation, if it would make things a little bit more viable. But all you guys go pop the door on that over there. I would like more building space, please. And until we deal with these little dungeons on the sides, it's not going to be a whole lot we can do. All of our dwarves are jockeying for food over here and getting stuck on one another. Perfect. Food's coming on in. Uh, it looks like it was a spooter cave. Let's go ahead and send a couple of dwarves over here to deal with said spooters before we end up with further orc issues. I do have a little bit of building space on this side. I would like to build maybe like a little like a little medium dwarvish condo right there. It's a little bit close to the war front though, which kind of worries me. I just want to get my pop cap up and get like a bigger army. All right, you guys, everybody in. We have a lot of spiders to kill here. And then we'll queue up a lot more mining on this side too just so we consistently have goodies coming in to make our lives easier. Gold is going to be a major factor in early game success, and if you can't get that gold squared away, you're going to start to have problems. Now, as we kill enemies, our dwarves are going to level up. They are going to become more elite. There are a number of different perks you can buy from the tech tree that cause them to level faster or level better, level more effectively, uh, get benefits each time they level up, like extra HP, stuff like that. Those are all just examples. I don't know if those are specifically in the game. But guys get better as they kill guys. And that's all you really need to rectify with the whole situation. Now everybody should go back and heal themselves in between these fights. And knocking out these corridors right here, we should end up with some much better building space too. I think. We have a technology that we can dedicate. Let's boost up the king a little bit. The king gets attack speed, armor penetration, and attack range. Yeah, that just sounds like a flat win. Let's go ahead and take it. Uh, because I would like for the king to be busting some heads out here. Uh, you do have a stat panel for every single character in the game. Feel free to utilize that to figure out what bonuses will work best. Sometimes when they say things like you get 30% attack, it helps to look and see if you have 8 attack or 50 attack because that 30% is way more consequential in the latter case than in the earlier case, whereas for the earlier character, it might be better to stack up attack speed or stack up something like that. Miners are mining. It looks like we got all the spiders cleared out. Good stuff. Uh, now, the goal of the game is to get the heart of the mountain. I don't know how many floors down it is, 
In my last playthrough, I had all the technologies and everything by the time I had the second floor cleared out, so I can't imagine it's much further down than that. And we're also going to want to get some traps going pretty soon before these groups sort of co coalesce and start hitting us simultaneously. We're already on, like, day 144 right now, but the mining process, I think, is really what's going to take us a little while. All right, war were declared. The king is out there, and he does appear to be attacking quite a bit faster. Let's take a few of these side dwarves over here. We'll move them onto this side to kind of, like, beef with the enemy. We do have a wizard in the back that we're going to want to watch out for. Uh, the wizard in the back can be highly damaging to your units. And so if we can get to the goblin wizard, it'll make our lives simpler. Uh, he's going to use little blink abilities and things to get away, but it's not going to help him. That's right, you and your stupid little hat. Get wrecked. Perfect. Enemies are now down. Everybody, oh, the miners got involved with that one, huh? Well, thank you, miners. I appreciate your patriotism in spreading dwarvish democracy to the orcish horde. I think we've got a little bit of equitable space back here where I can put another dwarvish house. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to increase my pop cap by 10 over there. Once they get these blocks all mined out, I already have plans for what I want to do over here as well. And it looks like there's another cave right there with the highlighting. Now that we've got a little bit more pop cap to play with, with that new building, let's continue expanding out the army with a few new members. And maybe a, a minor and maybe, like, another engineer, just in case the worst should happen. Engineers have a very high chance of, like, foul play and things not turning out very well for them. Another thing we can do is, in this game, you are expected to make minecarts. It's a really good idea to make these minecarts because they allow people to get around a lot faster than they would normally get around. Get around, round, round, ooh, wah, wah, ooh. Whoa, 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 nah, 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 nah. And you can see them right there getting live on the turnpike. And that should increase their efficiency at mining out some of these walls, too. We have a band of heavily armored orcs on their way in. What kind of music do they play? None of us really know. It's all just kind of cannibal corpse style noise. Um, but we do have full up food. We're looking pretty good on stone, so I'm not too worried about this clash right here. Especially given the fact that they gave us that early game Rune Priest who's around here somewhere. There he is. I was going to say, I didn't know where the Rune Priest was. Let's pull him back on into the main fighting area. There we go. We will collapse on this first orc right here, and he will get lit up first. Never be the first guy off of the drop boat. That's what I learned from Saving Private Ryan, is that you never want to be the guy that's up first on the boat. We do have a dwarf right there who's getting beat up pretty good. Uh, he's dead. I was trying to save him and pull him out of the lines, but I think some casualties were inevitable here. We'll just add a few more to the queue so that they get repopulated. Over time, there will be survivors of these battles. Their armor and their HP will get higher and thus make them more likely to survive future scrums. We've got like a little goblin warband over here that's prepping to come attack us, which is a bit of a bummer. You should expect that in this game, you're going to be under attack pretty much all the time. Traps are going to like they're going to start helping thin that out as you get further on into the game. Uh, so a lot of the enemies are going to die before they even get to the front gate, but there will be large volumes of them that you need to watch out for. I didn't mean to click that right there. That was an accident. So they're mining over on that side. Let's pop the cork on this guy too so that we have a large like contiguous area over here to build inside of. Early game concerns are almost universally for me. They revolve around getting enough space to build the things that I want to build. And we're starting to get there. The next thing that I'd like to make is a Tinkerer's Shack. In fact, I might make two of these just so we have a lot of parts coming in for booby traps. There we go. We'll drop those two right there. We've got the cash flow anyways. It's not that big of a deal. I'd also like to get this hollowed out behind these guys a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. Give the miners things to work on. Hey, our civilization advanced. Congratulations, King. With hard work and determination, you have become a dwarven stronghold. We have higher tax revenue from our houses. Trade routes with our allies have opened up, and your people celebrate your leadership as we work towards becoming a dwarven kingdom, which is going to be the next step. There's a bunch of bats in there. Have those guys run? 
have a few of these soldiers come deal with the actual fortified threat on this side. Like, have them kind of take aggro a little bit. There we go. This little bat cave shouldn't be that much of a problem. But I'd prefer not to lose any miners right now, because that's money wasted and productivity out the window. Alright. You guys head back on over to the front lines. You guys continue mining. It looks like there's some nice treasure inside of here. I would say, yeah, just make this all connect. Are there any caves on that side? No caves. So just make this one big sprawling area. There you go. Perfect. And once all this opens up, we should be in a really good spot to really, really move along with our production. Now, with these tinkerers huts, what do these do? They provide you with gears. Uh, gears are a thing that generates over time that you're going to need a lot of for making booby traps and also for manufacturing advanced units. We have Cyclopses coming on in. The best unit for dealing with big units like giants and things are these little guys called Tunnel Scouts. Uh, they're basically dwarvish snipers with crossbows, and they get a whole bunch of bonuses to fighting things that are bigger and meaner than they are. And so we're going to want to get some of them up and running pretty soon, too. Pop cap willing. I think I've got enough room right there for another dwarvish house. So I'll go ahead and drop it on in. Things are illuminating. They're getting better. In general, we're just kind of waiting for space to open up right now so that we can continue expanding out our territory. Another day, another wave, but I am producing some of those little crossbow units I was talking about earlier, and I think they're going to be very, very helpful to the defense as we get further on into the game. This is just a batch of goblins, so it shouldn't be that bad. We'll start booby trapping pretty soon so that you can see what that looks like, um, but let's deal with this threat first. Uh, because of the pathfinding being so bad, I tend to lean very heavily on the crossbowmen. Like, I keep, like, a bare minimum, highly buffed front line that can make contact and then kind of engage with the enemy. And then I just have a ton of crossbowmen behind them just flip, 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 like firing into combat uh, to kind of adjust for the DPS that I'm losing uh, by my melee guys stumbling all over one another. In the interim, I did add two more buffs to my infantry. All of my iron guards and all of my shield guys now have more armor. Uh, they now have more threat. They now have more HP. And uh, they have more things going on that are going to keep them safe as the game goes along. And that actually seemed like kind of an easy gimme victory. You love to see it. Let's get, like, two more tunnel scouts going. The more tunnel scouts I have over here, the happier I am. Tunnel scouts rule. There are researches and things inside all of these buildings uh, that you will definitely want to look into and start researching. They can be quite, quite consequential. Things like 20% attack speed increases for crossbowmen, uh, producing more resources, which right now we're not producing enough trap parts, uh, so I'm taking a productivity increase over here. There's also little things you can look at when it comes to upgrading your miners. So you can make them train and spawn in as level 2s, and you can have them move faster, you can give them a consumable slot. That's right, all of your characters can have multiple consumable slots that will stack up on their abilities over here. Uh, you can set up, there's a menu up here, this button was really hard to find. Uh, there's a menu right here where you can set up how much money each unit will spend on consumables like health potions, strength potions, iron skin potions, hand grenades, bombs, depth charges, things like that. Uh, they are very consequential to the outcome of combat. I highly recommend using consumables as soon as you get access to them. In fact, you can get access to consumables right in the beginning of the game. There are certain perks you can get from the research tree that negate the need for the building tree and you just instantly get grenades or whatever as a perk of being a part of your society. You just are part of a society of dwarves that really like blowing stuff up. And who doesn't? Explosives are always enjoyable. Since we're starting to have a lot more orcs coming on in, I would suggest that we take a 10% damage bonus culturally against greenskins. There are damage bonuses for everything in the game, from undead to monstrosities that you find beneath the surface. Uh, but I always start with orcs and greenskins, just because that's what you spend 90% of your time fighting. And so that 10% goes a long ways over the course of a 5 or 6 hour run. Another day and another wave. Let's get a few more units stacked out over here, just so we're like printing our replacements already. For whoever goes down in this particular battle. Wow, they want the king. They want the king and nothing but the king right now. 
It's a pretty serious little goblin fight. The good news is that the pathfinding affects the enemies just as much as it affects your units. So it's kind of like a tit for tat type situation. However, you do end up with situations like that dwarf right there that's like in base contact with an enemy and doesn't think to go attack the enemy that's right next to him instead of trying to get to the one from the attack designation once the pathfinding shits the bed on you. And so I would say that's kind of my... There, there's a number of complaints I have for this game that keep me from, like, from recommending it right now. This is one of those games that I really, really like. I, I want to like this game more than I do. And, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why that is. Uh, first and foremost, the pathfinding is really bad. That's the number one main gameplay disruptor that you're going to have to learn to go to bed with. Pathfinding is one of those basic, simple things that should probably be ironed out on release day. Uh, the player having to deal with units getting stuck, uh, units not being able to pathfind and figure out where they're going, both for and against the player are, are just one of those disruptions that needs to go, and it leads to other issues as well when you get further on into the game. And I'll explain what I mean by that right now. So I'm building an alchemy lab right here next to the front gate of town. And you might be asking yourself, why is he doing that? Like, why would he need to build the alchemy place so close to where the enemy is at? And the answer is pretty simple. You know the rally flag that exists on the tavern uh, that sends your guys back to the front? Once you get to the point in the game where you're actively getting consumables like potions and grenades, after every single fight, anybody in your army that has used a consumable, they will have to go back to the tinkering station to fill up their explosives and their gadgets. They will have to go back to the alchemy lab in order to fill up their potions. The problem here is that neither the potion place nor the tinkerer's lab have a rally flag that you can deploy to send them back to the front line. So if you're like me with your last playthrough, where your alchemy stuff is all in the back sort of noble quarter of your base, they're going to path all the way back over there. They're going to fill up their consumables while getting stuck on pathfinding. You're going to have to select them, send them back over to here. Then they will work again. They will go fill up all their potions. You'll have to select them again and then bring them back to the front. That's way too much micro for something that should just function all by itself. My suggestion is to get rid of that mechanic altogether just to mitigate the issue in the short term and make it so after every single fight, they just have a little money ticker pop up above their head for every consumable they bought and they don't need to run and visit the buildings. Uh, they would make it quicker, smoother, and honestly way less micro if the pathfinding is not going to be fixable. I spent a large amount of my time on my last run just grabbing wayward units and sending them back to the front after they filled up their various consumables uh, because there's no rally flag to help them get back there. And so these are, these are just bare basic functional things uh, that kind of need to be worked on. On top of that, the game does come with a plethora of bugs. Mine were all technically related, so a number of traps are not working properly right now. Uh, the biggest trap that's not working at the moment is the magma trap. I don't know if they fixed that with the most recent big patch or if they're still bugged, but when I played through yesterday, the magma traps, once they start firing, they never stop firing, which A, makes them super OP, and then with the lighting effects, if you use a lot of the magma traps to exploit the fact that they're broken, it will eventually lag out your game, the UI will crash, and the game will become unplayable just from, like, the graphical spam. Um, you can get rid of that problem a little bit by turning off the anti-aliasing, but it's a really pretty game, and it's kind of a shame to have to turn off the anti-aliasing for a problem like that. Uh, but by and large, there are things in the game that are bugged, and some of those bugs can kind of become catastrophic to your long-term enjoyment of the game. Once I got up to, like, really high unit counts, for example, and I had a lot of traps, and there's a lot of things fighting and dying, an issue that I ran into was just every now and again the frame rate would die on me. The UI itself would kind of, like, degauss, I guess. I don't even know how else to describe it. It would recover, come back, the frame rate would come back, but it started happening frequently enough, and the flicker was fast enough, and it was bright enough that I was like, all right, I, can't. I actually called off the stream early because of it, where I was like, I just can't watch the screen flicker like this. And so this is one of those games that I very, very, very badly want to like, because you guys know that I'm one of the biggest dwarf fanboys, like, in the entire world of YouTube. Dwarves are my favorite. I adore dwarves. I like dwarven culture. I like everything about them. 
Unfortunately, my enjoyment of the game was very much hindered by random visual bugs, uh, very much hindered by, by sort of pathfinding bugs, and also odd UI design decisions like squirreling away the consumables menu inside this thing that doesn't even look like a button. Um, it took me forever to find this menu and realize that this was a clickable button because it doesn't light up, it doesn't animate, it doesn't really like do anything when you mouse over it, when you click on it, it doesn't like indent and come back out like a button. Uh, it doesn't look like an interactable thing in the UI and so it took me forever to figure out how to get my units to actually use consumables and once I found it I felt really dumb. But part of that was because of the messaging that the UI has that it sends to the player. Um, this game is full of weird little UI decisions, bad pathfinding, and some potentially game-breaking bugs. I would wait to see how they patch it up and fix it up. They did drop a 1.5 gig patch this morning. I just checked, and the patch notes were pushed over to the Steam branch over there, so I could take a look at them over there. And it didn't really particularly fix any of the stuff that came up during the course of my run. As a final aside, I also had a save that wouldn't load, like when I loaded on in, all of the light sources were like bright as the sun, and it just like lagged out to like a half a frame per second and became unplayable. And so this is one of those, like I said, I want to like this game more than I actually do, but between the pathfinding issues and all the stuff that came up, it feels like it's actually in a chunkier, worse shape with this patch than it was the last time I covered the game. And that's a little bit of a bummer, because I always like to be an ardent, strident supporter of anything that has to do with dwarves. And there's a lot to like here. There's a lot of cool lighting effects. There's a lot of really cool armor and textures, like some of the best dwarvish architecture you're possibly going to see in any video game. Building design, it all looks fantastic, but it gets a wait and see from me. Like, I would not jump on the grenade right now, unless you're okay with those game-breaking things coming up during your run. And unless you're okay with just wrestling with the game's pathfinding, kind of strange intertwined systems for refilling potions and whatnot the entire time you go through because I was constantly, while prepping for this video, rescuing units that were stuck against lampposts, stuck against buildings, being like, where did those five soldiers go that I had a minute ago? They were three floors down fighting monsters and now they're all the way back up on the top floor stuck on a lantern, you know what I mean? Just weird little things, like, all throughout this playthrough that sort of dulled, I suppose, my enthusiasm over three or four hours, so. My name is Splattercat, I sit through the pile of find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. A little bit of disappointment in this one. Hopefully it gets better. Hopefully it keeps getting updated. We'll see. I, I want this game to be a rad dwarvish they are billions. I'm rooting for it. I never root for any game to do poorly here, but... There are some very real outstanding things here at a $25 price point that I, th I think I expect a little bit more polish out of. And so I'll see y'all later. Bye, folks.